The other big story of the day, so joining me to help me with that is the former U.S. attorney and now an MSNBC contributor, Joyce Vance. Uh, Ms. Vance, I want to talk to you about the Mueller subpoena of the Trump Organization. I think the surprise here is that it was a subpoena and not a request for documents. What, uh, do you assume a request was made and denied and that's why we have a subpoena? What was your reaction to the subpoena aspect of this? I think we have to be careful not to make assumptions here, but something that we've heard from the Trump Organization over time is that they were in a cooperative posture with the Mueller investigation and sharing documents that were needed. So this news that there's now a subpoena, that, that the subpoena was issued some weeks ago, is definitely a different trend. And does it signify anything? It, it may just be Mueller trying to cut square corners, but mm -hmm. far more likely it indicates that they they need uh, a document of legal significance that offers them teeth. And wh whether that's because cooperation was faltering or because they were not receiving documents that they expected would be in the company's possession, we'll, we'll learn more as the weeks move forward. But it does signal a change in attitude. So obviously, he wants Trump Organization, all things having to do with Russia. So what does that tell you about what he, how he's going about this investigation? I have a theory. but. Um, I'm curious what you would say to this and what you'd be comfortable saying. I haven't seen the exact language of the subpoena, and that's something that we'd like to see. Some prosecutors will occasionally write a broad subpoena and then negotiate the details uh, with the folks that they're seeking documents from. This is a subpoena Ducas Tecum. It's for documents. The company won't be able to exert a privilege, for instance, a Fifth Amendment privilege, to cloak the production of documents. So the fact that it's focused on, as we say, all things Russia, indicates to me that there's some coming together of these different themes of Trump's prior dealings in Russia long before he became a candidate, of those uh, developments in Russia that were contemporaneous with the campaign, for instance, the negotiation for Trump Moscow, Trump Tower in Moscow, and then whether or not those pre-existing financial relationships had anything to do with the approach from Russia in the 2016 Trump Tower meeting in Manhattan, that offer of help meeting. But this really suggests that Mueller at least is investigating whether there's a commonality among all of that conduct. Let me ask you this. The, um, if the, if, especially if the special counsel wanted to see the tax returns for the Trump organization and, and sort of a slew of LLCs that are related, because essentially every development project that the Trump organization um, starts usually is its own LLC. I mean, it's something we all learn going through the president's personal financial disclosure. Could he get those records without going through the Trump organization? Could he go through, subpoena the IRS, subpoena bank records? Or is he, to get those, those filings, he has to go to the Trump org directly? He can absolutely get those without going to the Trump organization directly. It's something prosecutors do routinely. Do you assume he already has done financial. that? Do you already yeah, assume he's done that? I would assume that? that that would be the first thing that he did. Gotcha. So he probably already has tax returns for every LLC. You probably assume he, he probably already has financial records, say, with Deutsche Bank, people like that. Would that be... Are those things that he would already likely have and not have to go through the Trump organization to get? Exactly. Those are the types of financial records, financials um, that prosecutors use to follow the money, Chuck. So one facet of this new subpoena request to the Trump organization could be possibly to see if what the organization turns over to Mueller matches what he already has, what he knows about and what he expects, or whether they're withholding information from him. That's one and possible spin on this. So this could be a test. So if you're the Trump organization, the smart thing to do is assume Mueller knows everything. And Mueller certainly does at this point. Well, it's an interesting way of putting it. Joyce Vance, uh, former U.S. attorney down there in Birmingham Force. Thanks very much for coming on, sharing your views. Thanks for having me. All right. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.